As water heats up, it starts boiling. As that water gets hotter and hotter, the rate of boiling increases, increasing the amount of heat being taken away as steam. This keeps intensifying as that heat builds and builds. Until, when you add enough heat, something really weird happens. It stops. Now you think boiling is one of the most simplest ideas, simplest phenomena in physics that we understand pretty readily. I mean, it's one of the things that we study first in school, right? Solids, liquids, and gases. In reality, however, boiling is a pretty tricky phenomenon that we don't fully understand. In a simple but pretty interesting experiment, what you can do is place a heating element in a container of water. If we heat it above the saturation temperature, which means the boiling point of water, bubbles begin to appear. Now you're probably pretty familiar with this, this is just boiling. And as those bubbles get bigger and bigger, we call this stage nucleate boiling. As it gets hotter and hotter, the energy transfer increases with more and more heat being sucked away from that heater. Until suddenly, it stops. Once the element gets hot enough, the boiling seems to seize almost completely, creating a runaway heating effect. This is known as the boiling crisis. You can actually study this pretty easily by just looking at a pan. If we get it hot enough, the water stops boiling vigorously and instead starts gliding around almost frictionlessly, barely boiling at all. It turns out that this occurs due to steam, which is way worse at conducting heat than water. Once the boiling becomes intense enough, a blanket of steam is created all around the hot surface, choking it and insulating it from losing its heat. The point where this happens has many names. The boiling crisis, critical heat flux, departure from nucleate boiling, the Leiden frost point, etc, etc. It's obviously a huge problem when this occurs, yet it's fiendishly hard to understand and predict, even though we're just boiling water. Why is this? So obviously we use boiling in so much stuff, from cooling our data centers to desalination, etc., etc. But one of the most critical places is in our nuclear power plants. Now we use water in nuclear power plants for lots of different things. It controls the actual reaction, it harnesses the power to go off and be used in the turbine, and pretty importantly, it stops it melting itself, removing huge amounts of heat energy, and that's all done through boiling. So if the boiling crisis occurs within a nuclear power plant, water's ability to remove heat falls really suddenly and dramatically. This will heat up the fuel rods, and if they can't be cooled immediately, this could lead to the melting and the release of nuclear fuel, which is like, mega bad. Now the boiling crisis is really difficult to predict. It's not just as simple as there being a certain amount of heat or a certain temperature that triggers it. And it turns out that this is all due to one very simple thing, bubbles. So it turns out that we don't really know how a bubble starts its life. I think that's fascinating. Science really can't answer this question yet. There are a lot of good theories that seem pretty plausible, but none of them have been accepted as definitive yet. What we're pretty certain of though, is that bubbles start their life on little cavities, little dips on a material surface. Once it's started, the bubble starts growing as water evaporates on its surface. At some point it's big enough and gravity means that it takes off. <laughs> Let's see if I can get the take done. Okay, eventually there's enough bubbles, they're big enough and they're being formed quickly enough, they stick around long enough that the entire surface is covered in vapor. This is when the boiling crisis occurs. I got it, cause I got it. What we want to do is be able to release the bubbles as small as possible so that as little of the surface as possible is covered in vapor. To understand how to do that, we need to do a bit of wetting. What do you mean by that? 
If we look at a droplet of liquid on a surface, we can see that the angle is different depending on what kind of surface we put it on. Some surfaces are hydrophobic. That means they just don't like water at all and will repel it as much as possible. We use this for things like raincoats and nonstick pans. Other things are hydrophilic. That's like waking up at 3 a.m. and gagging for a glass of water. They can't get enough of the water and they form really, really small contact angles as they spread out to be attracted to the surface as possible. Since a bubble is kind of like a droplet in air just with the liquid and gas swapped around, we can see that how much the surface attracts the liquid is going to affect how the bubble behaves. It's just the other way around. If the liquid and solid are more attracted to each other, the bubbles pinch close more easily since the liquid is looking to get underneath that bubble and then it lifts off when it's smaller. Because of this kind of pinching effect, little changes in the material, its surface, and how we make it can actually make a really big difference in when boiling crisis occurs because we can get rid of those bubbles either earlier or later. can reliably predict when the boiling crisis is going to occur, we can design more and more efficient power plants, which at the moment have a really conservative safety margin to make sure that the critical heat flux never occurs in any condition. Better design of fuel rods and other similar components can make them more high performing and easier to control than disaster and accident scenarios. This is why so much work is going into understanding how boiling actually works, especially on these small scales. Also, it's just kind of bloody embarrassing we don't understand boiling water, isn't it? We're only really recently seeing breakthroughs in how this works, with new research in the last couple of years identifying simple criteria that show us accurately and reproducibly when boiling crisis is going to occur. But there's still a lot more work to be done. Like we said, we still don't really understand how a bubble even starts. And if we can understand that, maybe we can create better materials which better control how bubbles form and grow, helping us to avoid the boiling crisis when we really need to.